this last part, we have two speakers. We have Ma'am Joy Kutapa and Aldo Inisa. So Ma'am Joy graduated uh, Computer Engineering and Master's in Electrical Engineering in 2006 and 2000 something. <coughs> but um, she's currently also an assistant professor here in the UPLA Island. And Aldrin is uh, just currently graduated in Bachelor of Science in ECE. And he's currently taking up his master's in a Picari Scholar. So right now they're gonna show two applications, the visualization. Is it that's this we're gonna look at how the network we're gonna see what happens in the network and our silencing application which was discussed earlier. So the third two okay. Hi. Uh, Hello. Hello, hello, Ayan. Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you, Ryan, para sa pagpapakabata mo sa akin. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I will be discussing the network resiliency and Aldrin <laughs> will be discussing visualization. So, as a recap, discussed earlier by Sir Mo, so here is the recent global data plane. So, basic idea of the global data plane is you have hardware below, basically your wireless sensor networks gathering data and you have applications of the global data plane that allow you to access that data even if the data come from different sources. So for example, alam natin na yung pinari, yung meron kang originally you have an energy application that focused on gathering data about the energy and you had a dedicated network for that. And you also have an application that uh, measures air quality and you had a dedicated network for that. You can also create another application without actually knowing yung itsura ng hardware sa ilalim but just accessing the data that is also being accessed by the energy application and the air quality application. So we'll show you later an example of that. And then we also have basically what you can see here is you can have different types of networks working together even if they're not talking to each other physically. So yung yung basically usapan na ginagawa is between yung data that is being accessed by the applications. So here is the basic setup that we have for the recent applications. So currently we have two types of networks. So the first network, uh, the first version uh, uses um, uses the Zigbee, uh, ano pala? Digimesh uses a uh, Digimesh protocol and the second network uses a uh, different protocol altogether. And they also have different hardware. Like yung first network uh, uses uh, an MM, uh, MSP30, MSP microcontroller and a transceiver, which is yung uh, ZIP, uh, transceiver. Kasi mayroong separate na transceiver that uses yung Digimesh na protocol. And then the second network uses an Atmel type of uh, system which has its own transceiver. So totally different hardware but you're able to talk to them both in two different types of applications. So these two applications are your network resiliency and yung visualization. So locally, mayroong kaming naka-store na uh, meron kaming server for sa nakastore yung mga data and we also have yung uh, nakastore dun sa servers ng UC Berkeley. So, each of these networks have their own aggregators. So here is what our network resiliency looks uh, the structure of our network resiliency application looks like. So based on yung idea ng network resiliency is you want to be able to monitor your network itself. So, iba pa yung dun sa pagmamonitor mo nung data na kinukuha ng network. Itong app, ang minamonitor niya is yung network of nodes itself. So, what do we mean by monitoring the network of nodes itself? So, you want to be able to see that your nodes are still alive. Are still able to send data. They still have enough energy to continue operating. So, one way of doing that is you, every now and then, check yung certain parameters that they have. You can also check to make, kasi one of the things that we implemented on our hardware is it can send the battery levels that it has. Especially kung 
purely battery lang yung ginagamit ng nodes nyo, that's very important for the health of your nodes. So, you can use those battery levels to determine which nodes do you still need to, you need to turn it off para mag-sleep or kailangan mag-recharge, mag-harvest uh, mag ng energy. And you can also use the other parameters to help it minimize uh, uh, power consumption. So, ano ba yung mga nakakapag bagsak talaga ng power consumption ng nodes? Mainly your uh, communications. So, ano yung mga parameters ng communications that you can uh, you can change? So, meron dyan. So, one way is yung transmission power. You can change the transmission power of the nodes. You can also change yung sleep cycles niya. So, you can turn it on, turn it off more often. Kung gusto mong mas makapag-prolong siya ng buhay niya. You can also change the number of retransmissions. So, retransmissions is if you have the first transmission ng packet, walang acknowledgement, may number of retransmissions na iaalaw mo until sabihin mo, okay, totally failed you. Uh, so, that's one thing uh, that you can also change. And then, we also have what we call yung node type. So, you can change yung node type mo that as a end node or as a router node. So, pag sabi mong end node, uh, hindi siya magsisend pa punta palayo sa kanya as in magre-receive lang lagi siya ng data and yung pag-send niya ng data is parang pataas lang or papunta lang sa aggregator. Tapos yung router node is parang pwede siyang maging padaanin mo yung data sa kanya papunta sa ibang nodes. So that is another way of changing yung uh, yung itsura ng network. And then finally you also have yung network routing. So one way of creating a large effect or impact on your network it's changing your routing. So, for example, if you have a system of nodes, nam alam mong sobrang mahaba yung communication, sobrang haba ng delay. Pero you can see that there's a different way of changing the routing that you can make it go faster. You can actually make a node talk to a different node. Ang problem lang niyan is you can only do that on nodes na open source yung protocol. So that was the problem that we had with the first network. Yung first network. Uh, hindi open source yung protocol, so hindi namin pwedeng maguhin yung routing. But we can change yung different, yung ibang parts na kasulat dyan, which also has an effect on the network. Pero yung may mas malaking impact is yung kapag babaguhin mo talaga kung sino yung kausap niya. So that we can do in the second network. So that is what we're going to demo later. Uh, we've put two, uh, we have six nodes down here that we're going to show later na paano namin pwede change your routing via dun sa application, not via dun sa hardware itself. So, as you can see here, very general yung, ano, yung framework that you can use that for different uh, hardware networks. Ang kailangan nyo lang baguhin is yung command translator. Basically, yung command translator is syempre iba yung format na dinabasa ng bawat nodes. So, babaguhin nyo lang yung format ng, kunyari, yung retransmission. Iba yung format ng retransmission dun sa first network dun sa format ng second network. But they both have a parameter that allows you to control the retransmission. So, all you, not, all you need to do is just change yung command translator if you want to implement this on a different type of hardware. Okay? So, so I've mentioned, so... It, yung currently, yung network resiliency application can control two different networks. The first one is DigiMesh, which is proprietary, and the second one is Lightweight Mesh. And any changes in the network that we're going to make later, we'll be doing in the visualization application, which will be discussed later by Aldrin. And yung one thing that we will also be implementing is a control algorithm. So currently, kasi ngayon, puro user entry. Para for example, mag-enter kami na, okay, gusto ko malaman ko yung battery level itong node na to. Tapos ibabalik sa akin ko yung battery level. Tapos malalaman ko, oh, okay, mababa na siya. Kailangan ko na siya isleep. So, user control pa yung ginagawa. Eventually, dapat, pwede kasing gawin ng algorithm na yung user sabihin niya, every time that this node goes this threshold down, sasabihin, sabihin na nung app ko na, okay, matulog ka na. As in, automatic. So, that is one way of looking at it. So, you can see, how, can the, how that can affect your network. So, nasa inyo yun kung ano yung uh, level of uh, battery that you need to make sure na meron pa rin yung node. So, ngayon, currently, yun pa lang yung type of algorithm that we can make. 
But after more characterizations of a larger network, yung talagang deploy na, we'll see what other types of control algorithms we can implement on the network so that you can prolong the battery, uh, prolong the network life. Kasi yung basic idea of resiliency is siguraduhin yung magpatagal yung buhay ng network for as long as you make it alive. So next is si Aldrin, so he'll be discussing new visualization. So um, this uh, system overview of the visualiz visualization. Uh, so basically, uh, since we have the GDP, then uh, nagagaling yung data natin. And for our visualization application, we have uh, two types of data: yung yung network data and yung actual data like for our case is uh, battery voltage, temperature, and humidity. So for in network data, uh, specifically yung kinukuha namin is yung node connections. So uh, this is the, uh, in the links of the network, it's uh, both the source and the destination. And then of course the timestamp. Then for uh, raw sensor data, so yung raw data ng mga sensors and yung timestamp again. Uh, then, uh, once it goes from the GDP to the serve uh, to our server here in UP, uh, the visualization application uh, basically sorts the data first. So, for example, uh, there are different sensors for temperature. Uh, it sorts uh, per type of data and then per node. And then after that, of course, you format it since it's all digital. So you uh, convert it into the, its analog values or voltages and temperature. And then after that, uh, the next part is uh, the server talks to the client, which is a web uh, uh, web application for both uh, network graphing and real-time data plotting. Then uh, right after the visualization application is in data analysis application. So uh, so far, since we have the visualization application, uh, the next step is the data analysis application, which is with, which can include uh, different uh, analysis on data. So for example, for uh, filtering or even simple computations like mga moving averages. So there, uh, the next part is demo na. So shown in the right is yung network resiliency app and on the left is yung visualization. So currently we have the coordinator node in front and we have four nodes, one, two, three, and four. And yeah, so as you can see, there are only four nodes that are alive na yung coordinator slash yung aggregator no kanina. So currently ngayon, we have four nodes na nag-coordinate ha. So yun yung four nodes na nandito sa harap. So yung node 4 and node 5, uh, nandiyan na siya ngay kay ngayon kasi kanina pa kami nagtitest. Pero pag hindi pa siya nakikita ng coordinator at all, hindi pa naman lalabas sa visualization yung node. So ngayon, kasi na uh, binuhay na namin yung two nodes na yun kanina. Kaya, nakikita nyo na siya visually ngayon. Pero currently, since it's down, actually, yung two nodes nyo are on the right and on the left sa so main wall. So, kaya wala kayong may kita na data being sent from those two nodes. So, itong visualization, basically, it helps you see the current state of your network. Um, uh, so, um, if you can see here, uh, merong entry for an update date. Since uh, in our network, uh, nila, meron, namin, meron kami information for every single link. At bawat isang link, pwede iba-iba yung timestamp or pwede pare-parehas. So, kailangan uh, ilump namin itong network na to into uh, different time frame. So, for example, if nilump mo siya na masyadong 
maliit like for example uh just within uh 100 milliseconds you may not even see a link or maybe pa isa-isa lang yung link so hindi mo nakikita yung buong network and if you lock uh, uh network data for around say 30 seconds maaari mo makita yung network ang buong network pero uh baka hindi mo siya gusto if gusto mo malaman kung sino ba yung mga mas madalas na mag-transmit or mag-receive so uh ginawa namin dynamic yung yung time frames na pwede mong uh Gawin. So for example, uh, currently, uh, nakalang siya into 2 second time frames. So if we change it to 1 second time frames, faster siya. Tapos, uh, if, eh, uh, kung mapapansin nyo, naka, naka 2 seconds pa rin siya. If ganun naman, ibig sabihin lang, yung sinasend talaga ng data is hindi, hindi talaga siya 1 second, kundi yung minimum niya 2 seconds. So, uh, if change naman natin into 5 seconds So yan, mas matagal na siyang uh, mag-update Tapos nilalock na niya into every 5 second time frames Okay, so any question so far? Dun sa visualization ng network Current network Okay, so can I ask yung 2 nodes na paki? Thank you Uh, other comments then uh, for the uh, yung network data we also have uh, yung hub source hub destination path source path destination so uh, for our hub source hub destination it means a uh, uh, single hub na nodes ang involved pero pag path destination siya yung uh, yung pinaka source across multiple hubs so for now uh, binubuo lang namin yung mga hub per hub per hub na mga links tapos um ni sniff rin uh, kinukuha rin nung sniffer yung other data like click quality pero sa ngayon hindi mo na namin binubuo okay so as you can see uh, since the boy na yung node 4 and node 5 so nagsisend na sila ngayon ng data dun sa coordinator node so nakikita na ngayon nung sniffer yung packets na pinapadala niya kaya napapakita na ngayon yung connections na meron tayo so what we can do now is go to the residency network. So take note now, we have two architectures, so yung node 1 and node 2. So ipapakita lang namin yung node 2 para makita niya yung effect. So first is, let's look at kung ano yung parameters na existing dun sa mga nodes. So let's say we want to look at node 2. So yung node 2 ng node 2. 2. Node 2. <laughs> Note name 2. <laughs> Tapos gusto nating naka-read ba yan? Yan. So gusto nating malaman yung sleep time tsaka yung something time. Yung current na uh, nakaset sa kanya na sleep time tsaka something time. Okay. So, uh, Ayan, so yung something time is 2 seconds. So nag-miss out lang yung packet nung para doon sa something time. Pero na-send din siya, hindi lang na-capture nung, nung application. So uh, ano lang, additional bug lang. Pero based on doon sa uh, pag-monitor namin, na-send din yung value nung sleep time. So let's try another. So let's try yung load for uh, yung power level. So you can actually uh, determine yung battery level. So yun yung gagamitin yung power level. Ah, sorry. Ano pala yan? Yung, ay, yung power level pa is yung transmission power. Okay, so... So, yung power level pa is yung transmission power. So, in this case, uh, naka 0 dB yung kanyang uh, transmission power. So, yung sa sensor data naman, 
So yun yung nandun sa temperature, humidity, and battery. So let's try yung node 6. Eh, nasa ba yung node 6? And then, node 6. dun sa kabilang side is yung naka, meron kaming yung coordinator node is nakakabit sa RPI. So, pwede kasi namin no, i-monitor via sa RPI mismo kung nakukuha ng coordinator node yung commands na sinesend ng no, uh, no application. So, here, uh, so yung node 6, uh, 31 degrees, humidity 60, um, 3.371 yan. Hindi <laughs> lang na yan. So, 3.371 3 volts na meron yung node. So, punta na ngayon tayo dun sa right. So, yung pwede tayo mag-allow ng parameter, uh, change ng parameters. So, let's say we want to, ang i-change na lang natin is yung routing ng network that we have here. So, currently, uh, as we can see, si node 4 is direct siyang kumakausap kay coordinator. So, pwede natin gawin na, okay, pakausapin na lang natin si node 4 kay node 3. Ay, sige, try natin pakausapin. Kay Note 3 na lang siya kumausap. As in, dun na yung kay, uh, naka-static siya. So, what we're doing is, if we fix natin si Note 4, na kay Note 3 lang siya kailangan kumausap. So, yung goal kasi dito is, lahat ng nodes kailangan makakausap sa coordinator. Kasi yung coordinator yung kumukuha ng data nila. So, parang ang ginagawa natin is, we want Note 4 to exclusively talk to Note 3 para niya makapag-send ng data to coordinator. So, yun. So, ang, ang sa limitation nga lang this though is kung ano yung connection na ginagawa nyo dun sa network. So, currently, ang um, connection namin na ginagamit is basta may yung Wi-Fi network dito sa UP. So, yun yung isang limitation nun. So, uh, dahil kailangang padaanin dun sa GDP. So, you have to take into consideration when characterizing your networks, yung length of time it takes for you to send the data from the app to the GDP and then from the GDP to the node. So, as you can see here, so, si node 4, puro dun na lang kay node 3 kumakausap. Okay. So, hindi na siya kumakausap dapat kay coordinator. So, parang i-fenix na natin siya dun sa ibang node. So, yun yung dun sa parameters na tinuha natin din na dun, sir. Okay, dun sa right, you can actually change yung root na pwede nyo i-fix, which is what we did. Pwede rin namang hindi nyo i-fix yung connection na yun. Kaya lang, kapag hindi nyo i-fix yung connection na yun, syempre, you overwrite yun nung existing na protocol nung node. Eventually, babalik siya dun sa Para sa kanya, bakit ako kakausap kay Node 3, mas madaling kumausap sa coordinator. So, meron ganung case. Kasi meron siyang sariling protocol. And then, meron din na pwede ka rin mag-remove ng root. So, parang kung gusto mo talagang hindi kausapin itong node na to, yung isang node, you can also do that dun sa network parameters. So, any questions so far dun sa network resiliency? lang pa siya ngayon? Um, Wala pa. Uh, random placement. Kasi mahirap yung... May way para ipipilit mo yung node na magsabi ko ano yun. Pero right now, ang goal namin is yung actual connections ng nodes. Hindi yung physically kung saan sila nakapit. Other questions? So, yung isa pang part ng visualization is yung data visualization. So, uh, dito sa network, uh, I think, siya nakasubscribe siya dun sa network data, na bagong mga network data na 
lalagay sa GDP. Now, for uh, data visualization, since uh, we also want to view yung uh, recent uh, data, hindi lang yung subscribe yung uh, gagamitin, pati na rin yung, pati na rin yung uh, normal na pag-re-read sa GDP. So, for example, uh, for now, uh, uh, pinapakita yung last 10 minutes. So, if wala siyang uh, nagbubi, ibig sabihin, wala pang data for that last 10 minutes. So, uh, I think uh, yung last three hours, yung last data is 8.45. So, uh, ito yung battery voltage. So, ito yung node 1, ito naman yung node, uh, version 1 ng mga nodes namin. Uh, dun sa second floor. So, sa ngayon, uh, makita dito yung for the last three hours kung ano yung data. So, since uh, since 11, around uh, 11.44 na. So, hanggang around 8.44 lang yung i-view niya. So, pag pumunta tayo dun sa 6 hours, mas madami siyang mag-view na data. And, mag-view din yung mga other data like temperature and humidity. Tapos, ah, uh, Naka-group din siya per node para malaman natin kung kanino nga ba yung, yung data na yun. Now, since, um, since yung data is um, masyadong, pwede siya masyadong marami across sabihin natin 12 hours, naglagay na kami ng uh, samples kung saan uh, i-specify mo kung ilan yung maximum number of points na pwede mong punin per node. Kasi for example, um, ngayon, Kahit na naka 12 hours siya, mas konti siyang points kesa dun yung venue natin yung 6 hours. Uh, kasi, um, if, masyad, if, lahat, if lahat ng uh, data kinuha natin, tas nabubi lang naman ito sa browser, sobrang, uh, sobrang lakas na sa memory kahit gano'n mo i-optimize yung, um, yung, yung size ng each data point. So, uh, for demonstration purposes, since walang data beyond 8.45, uh, meron kaming uh, samples dito, uh, random data lang siya para makita nyo how uh, the uh, plotting will work when there is real-time data. So, view natin yung last 10 minutes. So, ito, uh, random lang to. So, pag tinignan natin, uh, yung view, view mo lang na window of time is from around 11, around 11, before 11.36 hanggang around 11.46. So, uh, dito, uh, makita nyo, naka-group na yung data, pero dun sa, sa GDP, uh, naka-aggregate pa sila lahat. So, dito, uh, yung server, in charge siya dun sa pag-sort muna per data, uh, battery temperature, humidity, and then, once ma-sort na per data, uh, siya kala niya is a sort per nodes. So, there. So, do you have any questions regarding visualization? If may available na na data for the last one hour, um, madali na lang siya i-view kapag may application kasi nung una, uh, manually sinacheck pa namin sa GTP o kaya pag sinave namin sa local database. Tapos nakita nyo, uh, gumagalaw din siya since yun nga, real-time real uh, dummy data siya. So, uh, since na one hour siya ngayon, hindi naman dapat uh, laging nagre-request yung client para sa new data. Uh, mas less frequent siya mag-request compared sa kapag naka 10 minutes ka since mas maliit na yung resolution na view view mo. So, do you have any questions? Mayroon mo ba ba kayong bang questions? Both dun sa application. Any questions? Huwag kayo maya. I mean, yun yung point kaya namin kayo in-invite dito so that you can see how you can possibly use your GDP and you can see paano namin siya ginamit and para nyo may isip, paano nyo rin siya pwedeng magamit.
Uh, um, meron, uh, dun sa documentation nila, sabi nila, isusupport nila yung uh, queries. Pero ngayon hindi ako updated if supported na. Kasi so far, yung ginagawa ko, uh, based siya dun sa record number. So yung mga ano na to, kanyara itong past data na to. Pag may bagong, mga bagong data, galing siya sa GDP. Tapos para masave ko yung past data, may choice ako na ilagay na siya sa local database para pwede kong i-query. Pero once na implemented na sa GDP yung pwede mong i-query kahit hindi na i-save sa local database. Diretso na lang din sa GDP. Since um, if, for example, sa GDP namin ngayon, around 150,000 points na ata, yun nasa GCL, mas mabilis siya uh, kumuha ng, kahit na, nasa kalagit na ng record, yung data, mas mabilis kumuha kaysa nung nasa local database namin na kahit na tipong 10,000 points lang. kailangan yung alamin kung gaano karaming load yung pwede i-handle ng aggregator. So, currently, meron kasi kami, uh, tinetest din kasi namin na, na mer yung dun sa node 1, yun yung may, medyo marami-rami kami nakadeploy ngayon. So, originally, parang ilan nodes yung ginagawa natin? De ngayon, naka-50 na tayo sa isang aggregator. Okay. So, ngayon, so, meron na kami 50 nodes sa isang aggregator. So, depende din sa ano kasi isang ano dyan is yung placement syempre ng nodes tapos yung amount of data na pinapadala mo dun sa syempre yung makakapag-limit dun sa aggregator is yung memory space na meron siya so kung meron ka namang enough memory space and yung data mo lang na binibigay eh ilang kunyari yeah, katulad nung meron kami temperature, humidity, battery so relatively kung gano'n lang naman yung amount of baka so yun yung kailangan nyo meron ka yung question sa oras ko naman yung isang large scale na disaster ko naman yung isang may may massive na power outage makakaga gagana po ba yung GDP mag-uwal po ba? yung GDP naman is basically separate naman siya as in parang parang internet siya basically parang may kailang ang kailang mo lang magkaroon is meron kang net connection para mo ma-access yung GDP kasi separate naman yung GDP sa hardware na meron ka. So, as long as your aggregator or your coordinator is able to connect to palabas, maka-access yung GDP. So, one advantage na nun is right before ng kung ano mang nangyari is kung nakapag-send ka ng data dun sa GDP, then you can at least have yung last data that you have before whatever happens. Any other question? Okay, Mahi. Sir, can you say that you have to do it? Actually, that's one of our goals. Because when you apply a large state, then you can connect it. And the only solution for this is density control. So, yun yung hiniaral natin kung kung gano'ng karami yung kailangan ng deploy sa isang mga para mag-iing So, yun lang yung sarili niya ako rin kung ano yung performance ng system. Pero, depende kung ano ang actually yung gusto mo yung gawin yung sa network. Yun lang dinepend kung ano yung density ng networks na kailangan. So, yun yung isa sa mga hiniaral natin.
So, pag yung database daw, is kunyari, luma na. Tapos sa kalpa lang nilagay sa GDP. Yung timestamp nun is kung kailan nilagay sa GDP. So, yun na. So, yung timestamp na is kung kailan sa nilagay. Hindi yung kung kailan walang kuha yung data. Siguro timestamp, yung mobile extension ng time. Ah, hindi. Kasi, siyempre, Uh, since uh, walang way para makikip yung keep track yung time sa per node. So, uh, actually, kahit nagawin mo yun na, kaya gamit ka ng mga delays, uh, kahit gano'ng kaliit na delay, uh, kailangan mo pa ikip yung clock synchronization across node. So, yung mga time stop namin dito is yung kapag na-sniff na siya nung, ano, nung sniffer. Since yung sniffer, nakapalik siya sa PC. So, siya yung may timekeeping na, uh, na ability. So, yung time stop niya is yung time na na kita nung sniffer yung packet na pinadala. May iba ba ba? Other question? Diba, sabi kanina, pag nawala ng connection, pwede yung mag-dump na yun siya. Pag nagkaroon ulit ng connection. Pero yung sentang yung kanina, yung time stamp is time siya na pinasang isya. So, pag nag-down, isa lang yung time yung nangyayari. Oh, apparently, ganyan yung nangyayari. So, pag nag-down ka, kung ano yung kung susunod na yung seconds niya, yun talaga yung nangyayari. So, yung actually yung examen ngayon, ah, uh, ay, sorry. Yung examen ngayon, hindi lang kami nag-rely yun sa timestamp nung nung GDP. Yung uh, timestamp field doon sa mga packets namin. Packet. <laughs> so, yun, naka, so kahit magputol siya for now, parang daw kamaya, mamaya, ano naman yung timestamp na putol siya na receive ng ordering ko or, since yung time stamp kasi namin, for example, kung yung network connections yung habol mo, kunyari hindi yung data. Kung yung based on network connections, yung time stamp namin is based sa kung kailan nakita ni Sniffer na nagpadala ka ng packet. So, pwede, kung, pwede mong gamitin yun as, okay, at this time, buhay pa si Node kasi nakapagpadala pa siya. Pero after nun, nung wala ka na nakikita ng packet sa kanya, di alam mo nang yun yung may nangyari na sa kanya. So, yun yung Actually, interesting nga yung time to synchronization na yun. Kasi yung pinapla namin yung buong structure before, uh, una yung problem namin kasi yung mga nodes, wala siyang time capability. Uh, wala siyang real-time clock dun sa loob ng mga nodes. So, either maglalay kami ng additional uh, chip doon na RTC, or or may yung po-provide ng, ng time from the higher level of the structure. Uh, and kung sensor node ka na energy, Uh, na kulang yung energy mo or limited yung energy natin. Mahirap siyang lagay ng mga ganong facilities. Kaya, nag-resolve kami dun sa yung, kung ano yung time na na-receive siya ng aggregator, uh, yun na yung magiging time niya. Pero yun nga, yung problem din namin sa kaso, for example, yung current deployments namin, nasa second floor yung aggregator namin. Then yung nodes namin at, nasa fourth floor. So, may, obviously, may delay yung late, may konting latency yun from the fourth floor wag nila sa second floor. So, yun yung mga ginawin pa masyado na to check kung paano siya i-analyze uh, such that magiging uh, magkina namin yung totoong delay from the load itself to the aggregator. So actually, yun din yung check pa namin. Yun, 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 yun. Kung paano siya i-synchronize yung mga different differs, uh, yung paggamit ng NTP, Network Time Protocol, kung pwede siya gamitin, kung meron capability yung sniffers and communicators. So, yung mga question? Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am Joy and Audrey. So, well, that's the end of the entire workshop. <laughs>